Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another Jigsaw Saw discussion video. Today I'm going to be doing something I haven't done ever on this discussion platform and I, the only reason I'm doing it right now is because I have had a lot of people ask me for my thoughts and opinions about who I would rank as the best Jigsaw apprentices and why. So I thought Heck, maybe this would be fun to do. I can just talk about this stuff in general. Don't really have to think much about this. Just kind of throw it out there. So I hope you guys enjoy my thoughts. Please make sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. And give me your ranking for the people that you think were the best assistants or apprentices or whatever you would really label these people in the comment section below. Because I'm trying to keep this easy on myself and not go way too in depth or be way nerdy about this entire franchise, I'm going to be keeping this discussion solely on the movie continuity and I know I can go way further down the line if I was to talk about the games or the commentary tracks or even the shooting scripts of some of the films to give some broader context into who is helping at what point based on what creators were saying at any given movie or any given continuity that they decided against sometime down the line. And that's totally fine. That's totally true. The problem is when it comes to the Saw franchise, you really don't know what's going on until they sit there and explain it to you. We can go movies, years, even a decade without realizing that it was really someone else helping when we all thought it was this other person or that it was nobody at all. So I'm only going to be focusing on the people that we know from the main movie continuity had anything to do with Jigsaw's legacy or helping him set up a trap in any real way. So with that being said, let's just jump right into this. Number one, we're going to be talking about Abby. Abby helped John set up the nerve gas house in Saw 2. I'm sure a lot of you people recognize him and enjoy his character. There wasn't a whole lot to say about Abby or even think about with Abby's character. I would say that one of the most memorable things about him is the trap that he was put in. The whole furnace trap, while it wasn't overly brutal, it was still horrifying for a lot of people to watch. Plus, it was kind of smart with the way they worded it with only the devil can help you out and he was supposed to twist that knob. And every time I watch that scene, I'm just kind of yelling at the screen. It's just, just twist the knob. I know you're afraid of fire, but Jesus, like do something for yourself and actually help yourself in this situation. So I don't have a whole lot to say when it comes to Abby's character. We did get some sort of a semblance of the character and what he was all about in the video games. And even though I said I wasn't going to be diving into those a whole lot, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about his character, then I definitely say you should play at least the first video game for the Saw franchise. It was released on 360 and PlayStation 3. Definitely worth the play. It kind of showcases him as a huge Jigsaw fanboy and someone, if he was alive in the current continuity, would have actually known Eleanor. There is no way this guy, if you're taking his video game personality, isn't on the dark web celebrating Jigsaw on JigsawRules.com. So with that being said, he doesn't really grab any attention for himself. He's not really the best apprentice for the Saul philosophy, and he was more so of a helper, especially with the way that they brought Hoffman back into the fold in Saul 5 and showed them setting up the trap together. I guess it's possible that you can only really imagine him bringing in Laura to the nervy ass house, and that's why. The only problem with that is it kind of dilutes his character a little bit and makes his whole purpose in the Jigsaw mythology or Jigsaw legacy really null and void. He's not really a character worth remembering, and that's somewhat of a disappointment, especially when you're starting starting to bring in all of these different protégés or apprentices as they go down the line of sequels and introducing Hoffman and Logan and Dr. Gordon and all these other people who were helping who could have helped John at any given point throughout the series. So take that what you will. I really think Abby is an interesting character, but he didn't make a huge impact overall. Next, we have to talk about someone who kind of falls into that same line as Abby, Zepp. Zepp didn't really do anything. In fact, I would put Zepp last on this list if not for what he meant to the overall concept in John's legacy. And even though he didn't really do a whole lot, and I honestly don't like his character and the way that the future sequels made everything that he did or was told to do throughout the entire first film kind of null and void and against John's philosophy, without just telling myself that John was lying and his entire purpose here 
was to make sure that if Zepp was so depraved and wanting to save himself so desperately that he would in fact kill a mother and a daughter just to survive, then he deserved to die anyway. And that's my big problem with that character, but he did end up helping to free Dr. Gordon because as I pointed out in a couple other videos, that door was locked to the bathroom. There was no way that Adam and Dr. Gordon were getting out, and he was the only way unlocking that door and making sure that both these people left intact, or at least one of them. That's why I like Zep. That's why I think he's important to the overall scope of the series, but really, he didn't do a whole lot. He wasn't an apprentice, and we really shouldn't be counting him on this list, but we do know that he helped in a big way, especially in that first film, which for a lot of people is the epitome of what Saul was, what it ever wanted to be, and also the thing that got the entire franchise started. You cannot ignore his relevance in the series, especially with the theme of the Saul franchise being Hello Zep, because that is the point where everyone's jaw dropped and we're like, oh man, this franchise, this film means business. So yes, he was important in that respect and you have to honor him by not making him the last on this list. So number five is a character I think a lot of the fan base might actually end up disagreeing with me on and I love the idea of having a debate with you guys in the comment section below and that is Jill Tuck deserves to be somewhere in the middle of the characters who actually helped John, the people we can consider his apprentices or his disciples or people who followed his mythology, whatever we're talking about with this particular list. Because even though she was introduced in Saul 3 as somewhat of a passive character, maybe someone just kind of sitting in the background, Saul 4, 5, and 6 did a whole lot to build up her character and make her a formidable opponent to Hoffman, who was basically unraveling at that point and becoming too much of a slasher-like horror-troped villain. I really wish that they didn't just drop the ball with her in Saul 3D and they allowed her to go head-to-head -to -head with Hoffman as a formidable opponent. So we realized in that movie just how menacing and threatening she was. Maybe the person out of everyone they introduced in the entire franchise who was able to step up and actually be like a John character. I understand why they didn't do that. I understand that Hoffman needed to kind of show his brutality and actually making him a slasher-like villain in the last film of the series, or at least at that point, the last film of the series, was a good idea for it overall. Kind of showing that Hoffman was not John and that he was kind of degrading not only John's legacy, but also the franchise as a whole, and just something that Saul was never supposed to be. It shows us not only from a character sense, but also a story sense, just how far we had gotten from the original philosophy and the original story, these characters, and what they were there to actually accomplish, but just simply building up the twist for Dr. Gordon, who we'll talk about in a second, to have the last laugh in all of this just because the fans really wanted it. I'm not really sold on. I've never been so. And it would have been cool just to see Hoffman go up against Jill and knowing that these two characters, the two that are really left after all of this stuff, are way more brutal than we ever thought possible. But with that being said, I do like the way they built up her character. I think the ending of Saul 6 is one that's probably the best in the franchise, or at the very least, nobody who was a fan of Saul 3 and 4 was anticipating we'd get to. And she really does showcase in that film in particular how much she has grown into this whole mythology that John has built around himself and how much she's willing to help him. That's something that I wish that they would explore a little bit more in future sequels, but I can live with what they gave me now, and at this point, I'm going to put her directly in the middle. She didn't do enough to give her a top spot on this list, but I really think that she did more than enough to give her a better than last place placing. So what are your thoughts on that? Like I said, I think a lot of people are going to be disagreeing with me, but I think that's the fun of all of this. So if I thought that the last one was going to be controversial, considering what you guys put in the comment section so many times, this one is going to rally a lot of the people against me. And that is Dr. Lawrence Gordon is not the best apprentice or someone that I'm even excited to see back into the franchise in the near future. Really, if you ask me, this was something that was always just a fan theory that they decided to put at the very end of the series just to kind of appease everybody, and it doesn't make a ton of sense. We don't have a lot of ideas of who this guy is anymore or what happened to him after he survived the first game and the first film. So really, 
if we can get Dr. Lawrence Gordon back in a future sequel and we can get to see what happened to his family, what happened to his personal life, how he decided to either take up the games or put them away entirely until Logan comes back, that would be epic. I think that would be a story worth exploring and something that would really help his character be a little bit more than just a fan favorite theory brought to life because of lack of imagination. I know a lot of people might not like that, but really that's all I have to say about Dr. Lawrence Gordon. I did a video about why I don't think he's an apprentice and why he's more of a disciple of John's philosophy. But really, I think that this guy is more of a middle-of-the-road character and someone we really shouldn't be falling over ourselves to explore in the future. I don't think it's necessary to the story they've set up in Jigsaw or even the overall story from the Saw franchise in general. Next up, and I think we're going to be continuing with the controversy here, I think it's Detective Mark Hoffman. I understand a lot of people might put Hoffman either first or even second after Amanda, but just hear me out here. While I like his character and I like his motivation and his evolution from someone who was trying to protect the law and someone who was trying to get revenge for his sister and her untimely death, basically turning into somewhat of a serial killer, you can't help but blame the evolution of Hoffman's character into the downgrade of the series. But when we're just looking at the overall scope of the story that was told, throughout the first series and not looking at any of the extended universe stuff or any of the behind the scenes issues, you have a character that like Hoffman bastardizing John's mythology from the first movie he's actually introduced till the very last where he becomes nothing more than a slasher villain. And even though that's an interesting character arc for any character and something that's worth exploring and even celebrating for this entire franchise, I just hate the idea that because Hoffman took over the games, the entire franchise had to shift directions for not one movie, but several. I really wish that that didn't have to be the case, and if there was a huge mistake, it was actually killing off someone like John or even Amanda before their time. Because even though Hoffman did have a bit of insanity in him, it would have been much more fun and much more dramatic to see Amanda actually spiral out of control more so than it was Hoffman's. They got rid of an even better character in order to introduce him in the first place. So. Yes, I cannot put him even in the number two spot as much as that pains me, and I bet it really angers you guys as well, but I'm just trying to be honest. Number two shouldn't be any surprise now that we're this close to the very end. It's Logan Nielsen, who was introduced in Jigsaw. And I know we don't know a whole lot about his character right now or how he connects to the entire franchise, but I think that's one of the most fascinating things about him. We still have so much to explore with Saul 9 or hopefully a Saul 10, 11 or 12 or however long they decide to keep his character going or this franchise running and I think that they can create a story that connects him not only to John but maybe Amanda and Hoffman and Dr. Gordon and everyone else and by the end of all of it considering everything I've heard with Matt Passmore's character there is this idea that this guy is just as passionate about this character as Tobin Bell is to the entire John Kramer role. So we can see Matt Passmore creating Logan's character as he goes and giving us more context as to who he is. This is a little bit of a cop out in my opinion, but I have to say the idea that we're going to be getting a new character, a new backstory, and new personality in the next generation of the Saul franchise or the Saul apprenticeship or whatever you want to call it is exciting to me. And even though he hasn't done a lot to prove himself right now, I think the prospect of the unknown is way more exciting than actually analyzing the stuff that we've seen over the last 10 years. So you can agree with me, you don't have to agree with me, but Logan is an exciting apprentice. I can't wait to see what they do with him in the future. Number one, obviously, you guys saw this coming from a mile away. It is Amanda Young. Amanda, the very first apprentice that we even knew about, and a person who had a dominant role in the first three Saw films, the best three Saw films of the entire eight film franchise. And really, it's not so much that she was there from the beginning, which is a huge plus for her character. It's really the character that they built with her and the relationship she had with John. Throughout this entire franchise, I would have to say that Amanda Young, 
Shawnee Smith's character and Tobin Bell's character, there was a genuine chemistry there. And if you haven't, I definitely tell everyone, please make sure to go check out the audio commentary between Tobin Bell and Shawnee Smith for Saw 3. These people took time to develop their characters and develop their relationship that I believe really comes off on screen. And when it comes to Amanda's character, there's so much there that we didn't really know going into the original film or even after her death in the third film and reintroduction into Saul 6. There's stuff that they've hinted out that is part of her character and stuff that we've seen throughout the entirety of the franchise that would show her being way more of a complex character than anyone else that the franchise has actually introduced. And that even goes into John's character. Because unlike John, and maybe even Logan, and even Hoffman, and everyone else, she's the one person we see in this entire franchise who has flaws. In Saw 3, they have a lot of powerful scenes with her committing physical harm on herself trying to deal with all of these emotions that are building up inside of her. I always interpreted from the entire series that Amanda's character was someone who lost their mental stability after she was framed for the drug charge that she didn't commit by Eric Matthews. She was always trying to pick it up again and try to find herself and where she belonged in the world until John found her and put his philosophy into her, not only putting her through a trap, but also recruiting her because she was, at least at the time, the first major survivor from a Saul trap that he actually put on. And the very fact that John kept testing her in Saul 1 and Saul 2 and Saul 3 was something that simply put her into more and more agony. As he kept trying to make sure that she was mentally okay and giving her more and more reasons to live and actually live her life and continue his legacy in the best way possible, he kept giving her more and more control as a character, ultimately did create a more wicked psychopath that he had to deal with by the end of Saul 3. There's a lot there for her character and something I would have actually appreciated exploring a little bit more into the future of this franchise if they didn't decide to kill her off. But at least when you ask me, I think Saw 3 is good because they decided to kill her off. I have never seen in my entire or my just passion for cinema a film such as Saw 3 that decided so effortlessly to kill everyone who could have continued the franchise onward and go full steam ahead. So yes, I love Amanda's character. Shawnee Smith brings a lot to this role, not only as a character, but also just in its emotional impact to the overall series and what she means for the philosophy that the main character, John Kramer, is trying to get at throughout the entire series. So, so guys, this is just my short list on who I believe the best apprentice is at any given point. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please make sure to tell me what you think about this. Give your own list in the comment section below. Tell me what you want to see in the future for my Saw content. Any other lists like this that you'd like to see, maybe traps or movies or anything else like that where I can just kind of take a couple minutes to explain why I love this or why I love this over this or whatever. Guys, I hope you are having a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. It's been real.